Well, hey there. It's been a while, hasn't it? But today we're getting right back into things. The goal of today is to get the top end on this GPZ 550, which has been overboard to 615 cc. We have a freshly rebuilt head, so let's get it on there. The next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that this bike is in top dead center. Meaning the number one cylinder is at its highest point. Now behind these electronic points, you can see our crankshaft markings there. We want to line up the line between the T and the F with the mark up there. You can double check that you got it right by looking in the number one cylinder spark plug hole. And you should see the top of the cylinder right there. So we've got our two cams. I'm going to start with the exhaust cam. You can tell the difference between the two because the sprocket gear for the intake is bolted down using these hexagonal areas. And the exhaust in the circle. There's also some paint here on the exhaust. So we're going to put this one in first. Now this is the part that's really critical for this entire install and kind of part of what makes these Kawasaki's a bit more of a pain in the ass than say like a comparable era Honda or even BMW. Cam timing. And you can see I've got my exhaust on the right, intake on the left. There's a line here on the exhaust cam sprocket that says EX that lines up roughly parallel with the top of the head. Over here on the intake, there's a similar marking. Now what we're gonna wanna do is starting from the pin above the line here, we have to count 43 pins to the other side. The 43rd pin should be right above this line, 44 right down there. Don't worry if these cams aren't exactly seated right now, like obviously because of the timing, some of these lobes are gonna be interfering. Next up are the camshaft caps. These are numbered one through four for the exhaust cam and five through eight for the intake. Make sure that they go back in the correct spot in the right orientation. All right, now we're gonna check valve clearance. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna set each cylinder to top dead center. 
on the compression stroke, which means the cam lobes are gonna be facing away from each other. And there's a certain order that we're gonna do this in. And it looks like this. Non-stop sirens all day long. So with my measurements taken, it's time to pull the camshafts off again. These numbers are a bit of a mess, but it's basically the same thing as removing them the first time. Put cylinder one, top dead center, and go ahead and unbolt the camshafts, pull them out again. I will say uh, the unfortunate thing is the heads were already off when I got this bike. Uh, in the shop. So I don't know which of these uh, buckets belong where, and I'm not sure what the uh, what the valves were like. So uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. Keep track of where your lifters are so you can put them back in the same order. The idea here is that if your clearance is too tight, use a smaller shim. On the other hand, if your clearance is too big, then you go up a size in the shim. It's worth having a bunch of these on hand for your bike. After measuring the clearances and double checking the shim heights, we're able to determine what we're gonna replace them with. So to be honest with you, you're probably gonna have to do this several times. So uh, don't get discouraged. Just consider it practice. Now we start the process over, measuring the clearances and making adjustments if we need to, and you keep doing that until you're satisfied.
Well, that's the top end all back together. Yeah, the motor is missing a couple things like carburetors and exhaust and oil pan, but I think that's enough for today. Next time is going to be a good one because I think I'm going to get into the KN FCR race carbs for this bike. So definitely stick around if you want to see that.